We're in the Wellcome Trust Conservation Studio to talk about the exhibition Exquisite Bodies. This exhibition focuses on the craze for 19th century museums of anatomical waxwork models. At this time in history, it was possible for members of the public, men and women, usually admitted on separate days, to enter into knowledge that had formerly been the province of only the wealthy or those training to be medical practitioners. At the beginning of the exhibition, we look at the various techniques artists employed to try to represent the body's layers and to allow visitors to perform virtual dissections. This particular exhibit is an anatomical atlas that was published in uh, 1619. It employs a, a very ingenious way of um, using diagrams and superimposed flaps in order to allow the reader to get inside the body and, and really look at uh, the internal machinery. So here he is striking this very heroic pose and you can unveil the internal machinery you can actually um, perform many layers of dissection with this model. And the way that it works is that each particular organ, each individual blood vessel, muscle, etc., is uh, labelled with a letter which you can refer to over in the index on the left. So it's remarkably detailed. So if we turn the page, you can see the female illustration here as well. What we aim to do in the exhibition is to show how two-dimensional techniques of representing the body's layers move into three-dimensional form, particularly with the flourishing of waxwork modelling in the 18th century. And now we're going to go and look at some of those examples. We're here at the store where the majority of Henry Wellcome's collection is housed, and we're going to look at some of the key objects in exquisite bodies, including a series of obstetric anatomic wax plaques, some anatomical dolls, and a waxwork Venus, an 18th century waxwork Venus from the Grand Duke's spectacular collection, uh, which is housed in Florence. So these wax plaques are modelled from originals made by the Swiss modeller Joseph Curriger in the late 18th century. They're very fascinating objects because they, I think, as you can see, they're quite romantic, vivid, quite abstract designs, and yet they're also showing you sections of um, the interior machinery. So this, for instance, is a fetus, a, a baby, and it's um, fifth month. And uh, the fetal sac, as you can see, is kind of billowing out around the form in quite a curious, surreal way. The other two examples show female and male reproductive organs. And again, this same interesting um, conceit of layering the skin so that it appears in these beautiful sort of folds around and creates this very disembodied form floating in the frame. This is a pair of ivory anatomical dolls. Um, Wellcome collected a number of these um, dolls during the course of his lifetime. And uh, it's believed that these were probably made in Germany. They were quite popular during the 17th century. And um, what's nice about these items is that they do virtually dissect. You can take them apart and um, so I'll just demonstrate very gently here because they're very delicate objects as you can imagine. There we go. So you can see that the, the outer wall comes off and inside um, are the internal organs again sculpted in ivory. In this case the, the female is pregnant and inside is a little fully formed, simplified baby. The same with the male, he's not quite as um, interesting in some ways. I think uh, the female dolls were probably more popular. Okay, so there you can see you've got the, the viscera inside which does come out. These are quite mysterious objects, not a great deal is known about them. Some have argued in the past that they might have been used for people who were too modest to go to the doctor, particularly women who were too modest to be physically examined, um, that they might have acted as a kind of aid or sort of intermediary. Um, but it's probably more likely, because they're fairly crude and they're not incredibly detailed, that they were more of a plaything or a curiosity for um, a gentleman's cabinet.
During the 17th century, wax uh, modellers, sculptors and anatomists are collaborating regularly to create three-dimensional medical illustrations. And by the 1700s, uh, wax modelling has re is really flourishing, particularly in Italy, as a way of creating um, virtual uh, records of the interior structure of the body. So this waxwork model closely resembles life-size versions that still remain in the Specola Museum in Florence, part of Florence, Florence University. And um, it's a two foot long anatomical Venus, as they became known. And what's really striking about this object, I think you can see, is how alive she looks and um, languid, what sort of languid pose she's striking. It's incredibly erotic, rather lifelike. And um, some of the arguments that have been put forward about these kind of objects is that they enabled people to look at anatomy without thinking of death. So hence the idealised beauty. She's a really superlative example of the kind of anatomical Venuses that came later and became a kind of standard feature of most anatomical displays in the 19th century. So you can see that the, the outside plate comes off. She's been um, restored here. You can see sort of slightly um, crudely. Underneath you've got the, the muscles and the ribs and the, uh, the blood vessels being revealed. Everything incredibly vividly tinted. The wax is uh, beautifully um, in beautiful condition, really, considering this model is from the 1770s. You've got these various layers of dissection, um, and you can take out the, the entrails. And inside, most of these internal organs also remove um, in particular, uh, this model is uh, pregnant, so you can remove this outer wall of her womb. So the placenta that's, comes out. You can see that there's a little baby, fully formed child uh, inside. So these are just a few of the key exhibits that are part of Exquisite Bodies. They're some of the precedents which set the tone for the 19th century anatomical display. What you find with the 19th century examples is that these kinds of exhibits are circulating in a very different sphere, uh, a sphere that relates much more to the fairground than to the science museum and the medical collection and enables a, a huge swathe of people who never before have accessed uh, knowledge about anatomy to, to be able to find out about the inner workings of the body.